Hi, I'm Jessica Devine, and today I want to discuss one of the most common tick-borne infections and its specific symptoms. Many patients infected with Lyme disease have two or three, if not more, co-infections. Co-infections are the friends Lyme brings along. It rarely travels alone. I myself have six co-infections from one bite. Their, their symptoms can overlap some. So as Lyme patients, we are always having to listen very closely to our body to determine what is flaring and needs attention. Some symptoms are very specific to one disease, but the neurotoxins from these infections can all cause inflammation in the brain and nervous system to cause similar symptoms, so it can be very tricky. In prior videos, I have discussed Lyme disease, officially known as Borrelia. Today, I want to talk to you about the next B, Babesia, also known as Babesiosis. Babesia is a protozoa that infects red blood cells. It is a malaria-like parasite, often referred to as a cousin of malaria. It is the most common co-infection of Lyme. Babesia was one of my worst infections and at one point caused me to have a 102 degree temperature for three straight months. I had to get a third pick line place to get it controlled. Babesia can be horrible. Babesia greatly affects the autonomic nervous system. People with active Babesia are also often unable to focus as cognitive function is affected. Depression and anxiety can arise. Fear takes over often. It is extremely scary and you feel almost uneasy in your own skin and body. Babesia is very well known to cause drenching sweats and chills, especially in the evening. People that have Babesia can have a hard time controlling their body temperature. Temperature deregulation is related to the dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, which is responsible for many functions of the body, such as heartbeat, breathing, etc., can be greatly impacted by Babesia. When the brain and body aren't communicating correctly, it has a hard time functioning normally. Babesia can cause postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, known as POTS. It's a racing heart at rest and or an irregular heartbeat. I had this particular symptom of Babesia and it took years for me to find solutions to manage my heart issues. I would often end up in the ER. Air hunger and shortness of breath are also common in Babesia. And it happens when the body is unable to regulate oxygen saturation, again, due to Babesia's effect on the autonomic nervous system, also known as ANS. Insomnia is super common because Babesia affects the sleep center in the brain. Other symptoms include blurred vision, photosensitivity, bowel motility issues, and bladder difficulties. Babesia infection can also affect certain areas of the wrists, hands, ankles, and feet. These areas can be painful, numb, or experience uh, temperature extremes. Although another co-infection, Bartonella, is more often responsible for painful soles of the feet or shins. Babesia in general is not the cause of extreme body pain. Although Babesia is known to cause muscle pain, someone with high levels of pain could have another co-infection at play or they have an issue with their detoxification system. Babesia can also cause low blood pressure, liver problems, severe anemia, which is a breakdown of the red blood cells, and in less commonly kidney failure. Babesiosis diagnosis and treatment. I'm going to list off all the most known symptoms and at the very end of this video to keep this video short. There are well-known treatments for Babesia. I have been working to eradicate it for years and slowly bringing it down. 
For some lucky patients, it can be beat in seven to 12 months. But for me, it has been a beast to treat. I hate it the most because it almost killed me. But I am winning the fight now, and I will do a separate video on my favorite effective things I've used against it. There are a few strains of, of Babesia, so you want to test for the most common ones, Microti and Dunconi, to get an accurate diagnosis. I have Babesia Dunconi, which used to be considered more common on the West Coast. A more well-known strain is Babesia Microti, formerly thought to only be on the East Coast. But new research indicates there is no longer a division of Babesial strains between the East Coast and the West Coast. Babesia Dunconi has now been identified in Eastern USA and Canada. In general, it is treated with anti-malarial medications in combination with antibiotics. In some studies, antibiotics used against Babesia microti was less effective against Babesia Dunconi, making treatment of Dunconi more challenging. Lucky me. This is because Babesia Dunconi has been associated with higher parasite burden. So treating with an educated practitioner is very important. If they Google, if they Google what it is right in front of you, you are in the right place. Yes, this has happened to me more than once. Okay, so keep in mind, Babesia can be clinically diagnosed by a Lyme literate doctor who has dedicated the time to become deeply educated on these diseases and their specific symptoms. I'd like to close with the most common symptoms documented in patients with Babesia. These are often very severe. I had every single one of these. Headaches or migraines, persistent and focused on the back of the head and neck areas. Profound fatigue can be intermittent. Fevers, night sweats, shortness of breath, air hunger, cough, anxiety, depression, GI problems like nausea, vomiting, low appetite, abdominal pain, and motility issues. Muscle pain, vivid dreams, light and sound sensitivity, enlarged liver and spleen, neuropathy, pain, burning, and numbness, eye pain or pressure, vertigo, short-term memory loss and confusion, anemia, autonomic nervous system dysfunction. If you have Babesia, I understand how you feel. Please know there is hope. I used to be bedridden from Babesia and unable to even recall my own child's name. Now that I'm well into my recovery, I want to tell you that there is hope with the right treatment and practitioner. Please subscribe if you want to be alerted to my next video. Thank you for listening.